Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Kevin Bridges. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the three party leaders. But what does EFGC stand for? Is it, Is it... everybody frowns at a ginger cat? <laughs> Close. It's England's finest gay choir. <laughs> Is it? Everybody finds Gordon creepy. <laughs> Was it the photographer's instructions? Eyes forward, gobs closed. <laughs> Is it? Ecstasy fiends on gigantic come down. <laughs> it's actually to do with ecstasy. It's what Nick Clegg needs for a big night. Ecstasy, frisky goths and a camcorder. <laughs> They all look thoroughly miserable, don't they? Yes, they do. Is it excited fans gather for Coldplay? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it everyone forgets Jeffrey Clegg? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Are, are you sure it's not election fever? Go compare. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that guy would really cheer up yeah. the election, wouldn't he? <laughs> Looking at Brown's expression, I'm yep. thinking it's Etonian fondles Gordon's crotch. <laughs> is this, this doesn't quite fit, but is it uh, Piers Morgan is a twat? <laughs> <laughs> I think the E stands for election it does because for election, this is yes. about politics. Yes. Election fever grips country? Yes, it is! Yeah. Well done. Very good. <laughs> The answer I was looking for was election fever grips country. This is the news that Gordon Brown's appearance on Piers Morgan's talk show, the launch of a new Tory poster campaign, and Nick Clegg's admission that he would dismiss a coalition in the face of a hung parliament have signalled that the race for number 10 has properly begun. It's on. It is. Oh, it's so happening. Did you, did you see the Morgan uh, interview? Oh, the Morgan. It was absolutely incredible, wasn't it? Like, the, I don't he, know, I didn't look see him, it. He absolutely ripped it. I reckon he's going to do more TV. I wouldn't be surprised if you flick the telly on, you see Brown just going, bring on the wall! <laughs> <laughs> but he should have done that. He just should have wandered around ITV, getting rid of all these people we hate. Wouldn't that have been amazing seeing him on YouTube? Look what Gordon's brought back from ITV. It's just the decapitated head of Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually... Um, watch the programme. I was too busy hammering nails into my balls <laughs> rather than, uh, rather than watch it. But, uh, you yeah, know, that's my Valentine's Night uh, <laughs> ritual. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I, do think, I do think it's a great idea of, 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 you know, for Gordon Brown to go on a chat show with Piers Morgan. If there's one way to make sure you don't look like the biggest arsehole in the room is just <laughs> yeah. be within the same room as Piers Morgan. It's just, <laughs> it's just, no, it's just like, you know, having a fat mace exactly. so you don't look Piers so fat. <laughs> Did you see um, Morgan was like an 11-year-old boy? Do you drink a lot? Be like girls. We've got loads of girls, yeah? <laughs> he asked the Prime Minister if he, if he was a member of the Mile High Club. As if Brown's going to go, yeah, on telly, yeah, we're in the mile. I banged her on an easy jet. Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> in his head, was he going... More electable, less electable. More electable, less electable. <laughs> if I admit to it, does that make me more of a better Prime Minister or a worse Prime Minister? What we've got all these, haven't we? We've got these celebrities fronting a lot of shows now. Obviously, we've got Piers Morgan Life Stories, Ross Kemp in Afghanistan. I'd just like to see them swap it round a bit. You know, Ross Kemp's Life Stories, Piers Morgan in Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 the, the reports always say... Well, they're trying to make Gordon Brown more human. I love that. I love that idea. We're trying to make him human, like there's a bloke out the back. Quick, Igor, throw the switch. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. No, wait. No, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> it's an advisor, though, isn't it? The reason he went on it, supposedly, is because his advisors have told him that Britain does not trust Gordon Brown. But we do trust Gordon Brown. We absolutely trust Gordon Brown. 
to do the wrong thing <laughs> all the time. So it was a waste of time. Sarah Brown, though, she said that the reason she wanted him to go on the show was she wanted the public to be able to see the man she sees in private. At which point you're thinking, well, it was lucky he didn't turn up in his little underpants <laughs> with a Kit Kat and a mug of tea going, why does everybody hate me? <laughs> Yeah, it's said a Downing Street insider said Brown's incapable of leadership of any kind. I remember when the recession was in full flight, it was uh, Gordon Brown set to lead the UK into a depression, which I thought he's the ideal man for that. <laughs> he's not the guy he... could lead a conga line into a depression. <laughs> <laughs> what was David Cameron's reaction? He wants to go on telly. He does yeah, want to go on telly. He's going to go on an episode of Look Good Naked. <laughs> The polls are very close at the moment, aren't they? They reckon if the polls, if we went to the polls tomorrow, they reckon that Cameron would be eight seats short of a majority. And I'm thinking, what a fantastic phrase that is. Eight seats short of a majority. Makes him sound like it's a bit simple, doesn't it? All that <laughs> yeah. Cameron, yeah. he's eight seats short of a majority. <laughs> <he is. laughs> what have the Tories introduced this week? Oh, I've got a new poster. They have a, they have a new series of posters, actually. Yeah, and they're kind of intriguingly done. I've never voted Tory before, dot, dot, dot. It's essentially a round of scenes we'd like to see <laughs> that they're putting up all over the country. It's a caption competition. There's a family one. There's a guy in a garage for some reason. I've never voted Tory for, but we need to Twitch, you'd probably go, that's all very interesting, Dave, but uh, you, you've had the car since Wednesday. Any chance you're going <laughs> to... It's, it's nice that we have these times to chat, but any chance you could fix the brakes for me? The, uh, but it's, it's such a scene you'd uh, like to see. You can actually stick yourself into it. You can do it as a game. I've never <laughs> voted Tory. <laughs> I've... I've never voted Tory before. This is my own particular caption, but Cameron is holding a gun to my testicles. Feel free to stick them online. You can do your own. But how scary do I look when I actually Terrifying. take well, what is clearly a publicity photograph for a comedy tour, but put me in overalls? Uh... You look like a Russian gangland yeah. killer. <laughs> I'm really proud of that. I find that I look <laughs> quite great. hard. Even though you're not actually there, you yeah. already you look uncomfortable to be in a garage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like it, the caption should be Ross Kemp on garages. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the Tories have got far more money than Labour to spend on adverts. And the brilliant thing is they whack up an advert now and then everybody spoofs it. They're basically paying for their own downfall. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. You, you can imagine what's going to happen. You know, go on the web soon. You know, I've never voted Tory before, but I've only just had a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never voted vote. Tory before, but I've finally learned how to spell X. <laughs> <laughs> I've never voted Tory before, but I believe you should try everything once. That's why I'm addicted to crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you see where he's been this week trying to win votes? Scotland. Scotland yeah. That's yes. right. Uh, trying to get a Tories trying to get votes in Scotland. <laughs> That's about as likely as switching on BBC One and seeing David Attenborough headbutt a gorilla. <laughs> what he's actually said is he's trying to reach out to Scottish people who haven't voted Tory before, or as we also call them, Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many Scottish MPs are? Kevin, do you know how many Scottish MPs we have? I don't have a clue. How many? One. 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 It is practically... His visit to Scotland is like an episode in Last Chance to See. Because there's only one, so they can't breed anymore. So this one's going to die out, and that'll be the end of it. he tried to win them over with green policies. If he wants to win the Scottish vote, he should make ginger people tax-exempt. And Scottish people can see through David Cameron, so I know that kind of never been punched in the face confidence. Gordon Brown, he looks defeated, dejected, waiting for the worst to happen. Scot he looks like Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish Tory conference is one day. It's one day long. That's all they've got. They've, so they basically just meet up to make sure they're all still alive. <laughs> and they go, you all right then, all right, guys? See you next year, that's it. And that's <laughs> it. They go away. Just, He's basically it's like a mercy visit on his part. <laughs> it's like, you know when you go and see your nan in the home and you say, yeah, I'm sure you'll soon be able to return home. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, one day there will be Tory MPs here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got an image of them just in a van. Anybody? Yeah. Any yeah. Tory? Must Bring be out your Tories! Ning, 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 ning! Just wheeling them around in the car. Ah. The, the Tories announced this week that supposedly 54% of girls under 18 in deprived areas got pregnant. Then they apologised and said, no, it's in fact 5.4%. <laughs> 
they, George Osmond said they'd got the decimal point in the wrong place. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, fantastic. So we can soon look forward to VAT at 175%. <laughs> My, my favourite thing about it is when they said to him, eh, it's actually 5.4, he went, yeah, but still. Uh... <laughs> Isn't that exactly what happens, how the teenage girls get pregnant in the first place? It's because the digit didn't go in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Now we play a round called Ashley Cole just sent me a picture of his mock. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Kevin, Russell and Chris, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. First subject is weather. Oh, OK, okay Chris Adams. We, in this country, massively overreact to weather. There was this, uh, a tornado in Birmingham right, a few years ago. The tiniest tornado you've ever seen in your life. In, in America, a tornado is a massive thing that destroys whole states. Here, the twister hits Selly Oak. <laughs> and the entire <laughs> British press went nuts. The Guardian said it dislodged roof tiles yeah. and smashed plant pots. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> They interviewed these two lads on the Today programme on Radio 4. One of them said it was, it was horrifying. He said, I was sat in my back room. I thought the window was going to come in. <laughs> Next thing I knew, a bin liner flew past. <laughs> <laughs> Not a car. Not even a bin. A bin liner. <laughs> it was so breezy. <laughs> and he talked to his mate. They said, what was it? <laughs> his mate had evidently been followed down the street by the tornado, right? <laughs> Before, presumably, he went behind his gate and shot it and the tornado <laughs> bounced off. <laughs> what was it like? Ow! Ow! He said, ow! It was horrifying. He said, he said it was like being followed down the street by a giant carrot! <laughs> <laughs> Not a whirling funnel of death. <laughs> a giant carrot! <laughs> I ate vitamins. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is school. Who wants to come in with that? Hello, sir. Is that an apple for school? I went to school in Scotland, so I've never seen... <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to a recent shock statistic, one in three children... One in three 15-year-olds in the UK admits to being sexually active. I think anybody who's actually shocked by this statistic forgets their school days. Now, just because a 15-year-old claims to be sexually active <laughs> does not mean that they are sexually active. If some youth worker approached you at 15 years old in front of all your mates <laughs> and asked you if you were sexually active, you'd be going, of course, mate, who's shagger? <laughs> Put me in for four, pal. In our fun memory of school, remember the first day back at school after the summer holidays, first day of term, that was a good day to pay attention, that was the day you found out what class you were in. I don't mean educationally, I mean socially. <laughs> first day after summer, you had the rich kids, they'd come strolling in with a suntan and a new school bag, and then the poor kids would come in with a black eye and a new <laughs> second name. <laughs> You need to ask your teacher, sir, how come Jamie Cosgrove's now called Jamie De La Cruz? <laughs> oh, that's because his mum's dirty. <laughs> well, I that that was my okay. school <laughs> OK, Russell, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is joy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two very giddy albinos there. <laughs> Like, do you know what gives me joy? People who are a bit different. I fell in love with my friend Tom, age five. He stood up in the middle of a nativity play and went, well, enough's enough. <laughs> what made it even better, he was the front end of a donkey. <laughs> I like noises as well. I heard this in a supermarket the other day. Wee! I thought, I'm following that, right? It was, <laughs> it was an old man skidding on a trolley. He'd done the trolley gone and just, wee! <laughs> 
just this blur of giddy wrinkles. What made it even better, a security guard stopped him and went, Oi, I've told you. <laughs> <laughs> How can that not make you happy? And sometimes we laugh at stuff that we shouldn't. Like, I was in a pub recently, I saw a full-size Jenga topple onto a pissed dwarf. Now... <laughs> the head says no, the belly says yes! <laughs> Love, Russell! Before the bricks hit his tiny face, he went, bloody hell. <laughs> a bloke two seats along went, that was like 9-11. You know, going, oh, God. <laughs> Thank you very much, Russell. <laughs> And the points there go to Chris and Kevin. <laughs> Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Kevin, which category would you like? Uh, sport, please, Dara. OK, your category is sport. The answer is 17 days. But what is the question? <laughs> what was the winner's time in last year's Glasgow Marathon? <laughs> Is it uh, how often would Tiger Woods sleep with his wife if he operated a squad rotation policy? <laughs> is, it, is it how long do you hallucinate if you lick Bruce Forsyth? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long has Vernon Cabe been sleeping in the spare room? <laughs> how long does it take Abu Hamza to do the washing up? <laughs> is it how many days are there in a calendar from Poundland? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it, on average, how long after being born do babies in Chingford get their ears pierced? <laughs> <laughs> how many days of Christmas do Jedward think there are? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many days into his 40-day fast did Jesus go sod this and magic up a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Chicken! It, num, num, num. <laughs> OK, can you move towards the correct answer, please? Is it it's okay. not how long do the Winter Olympics, Olympics go on? Absolutely, that's very yes, good. Sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> the question I was looking for was how long in total will the current Winter Olympics last? The event, which started in Vancouver last week, has been beset by many problems, including a spate of bad weather, or good weather, depending how you look at it, which forced organisers to reschedule some events. Uh, have you only been watching it? Oh, it's no. dull, isn't yeah. it? It's, no, you've not been watching the right events. There's, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, the, oh, oh, give me yeah. one. Yeah. OK, right, OK. I, I could, you know, that's my Winter Olympics duel. That one's where you send the four snowboarders down at the same time and just bump into each other. That's very good. The moguls, where you just go, ooh, that's bad in your knees. That's particularly good, because they go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Which is essentially all they do. They go, ah, 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 ooh, ah, either left Monkey right. impressions. The, <laughs> the, 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 the ones like the biathlon, they're genuinely great. The ones where they do this for an hour, and then a man, although that stands actually is a bit camp, yeah, to be no, fair. Yeah, sure. That does look like we Googled by athlete. Uh, and it also and looks I went like... to the wrong website entirely. Oh, get that on your target. Uh... Yeah, get me think, the reason they go fast, though, I mean, they say they do go remarkably fast by athletes, but I think if the next competitor, if you knew the competitor behind you was on skis and had a gun, you would go fairly fast as well. <laughs> it's actually all gone completely right. It went wrong right from the opening ceremony because one of the, uh, one of the torchbearers couldn't light their ring. And it is difficult. We've all tried it as students. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> it's it's Chris, Chris, the problem yeah. is they massively overcomplicate the torch thing every time. Have you seen the design for the London one? The design for the London one is Sally Gunnell turns a crank handle, a boot hits a bucket, a ball rolls out, <laughs> goes down through a bathtub which hits a seesaw, a little diver goes into a tub which lets the cage go down on the mouse. <laughs> I may have got that mixed up with something else, but... It's, it's pretty, pretty close. Great, if we just got Ray Winston to light it, just by going... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it out, you slag. Yeah, yeah, Walking away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. yeah. See, they think... Do you know why there's no snow there? <laughs> it's a long Good Friday, yeah. The reason there's no snow, the audience are so depressed, their tears are melting it. It's, it's really snow. Snow. It's great. And you've never skied or snowboarded or anything no. like that, no? of course so I'm I, not. I, 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 skiing's great. Like, I've tried snowboarding and I can't do it. For me, snowboarding is like being beaten up by a mountain. That is my experience. Yeah. Ed, do you want to come snowboarding? I could, or you could just cover yourself in snow and kick shit out of me. <laughs> Very similar experience, a uh, uh, lot cheaper. I think the ski jumping, the ski jumping with the long... Because um, is, is, there is an element of... There's a lot of hang time in a ski jump. Nothing that couldn't be cured by just, I don't know, Super Mario-ing it up a bit by having giant pendulums that swing across. <laughs> And you'd, and you'd have to start your bit uh, like, and, and time it exactly right. Otherwise, you'd be like, he's got great lift, 
Bang, he's gone! He's there. <laughs> but the British team are struggling because the Snow Sport GB, which was the company they're supposed yeah. to look after, went into administration. So all our athletes are struggling to find the money to actually be out there in the first place. So it seems that even if they win, when they get home, they'll have to get their medals, put them in an envelope, and send them off to cash my girl. <laughs> <laughs> they're fiercely proud of the ice hockey over there. Oh, in the the Canadian, the Canadian, they're mad, but I, you know, what I, I explained to them that you know over here. Hockey is, is basically a girl's game. And they say, oh, yeah, but we do it on ice. I'm going, yes, because nothing makes it more manly than doing something on ice. That's, that's how you macho something up. Ice. Uh, have, you seen, have you seen that? Have you seen some the, skates? The other have you seen the snow leopard, by the way? Have you seen the snow leopard? Snow leopard. Is he an he's assassin? Good. He's not an assassin, no. He's a Ghanaian skier called Kwame Nkrumah at Champong. And do you know where he learned to ski? He's competing for Ghana. Milton for the Milton Keynes. Keynes. In Milton Keynes. He yeah. worked, uh, for, he learned to dump. ski when he was working as a receptionist at the ski centre in Milton Keynes. <laughs> and his outfit actually isn't a tribute to the jungle or to Ghana or the native African wildlife. Is Leopard skin outfit is a tribute to the women of Milton Keynes. Uh, and, <laughs> and interestingly, <laughs> you can't really see it there, but it's backless. <laughs> In other news, what are British people doing less of at the moment? Oh, less and less marriage. Right. Yes. Yes. Lowest figures since uh, 18, since 1862. Uh, we just can't be bothered, though, can we? That's why we're not getting well, married. I don't think I don't think it's that. I, I can't it's, be it's, it's just like it's brutal. <laughs> like, no, but I, I, love, I love my girlfriend a lot, but, as you know, every time we go past a jewellery shop, you turn into Gollum. And <laughs> it's horrific, isn't he, just dragging her away? I need it! You can, you can actually get, though, you can actually get the one ring from jewellers. Very easy to steal, though, cos you just go invisible and walk out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, if, if you could be invisible, you wouldn't get married. Which, if you could be invisible, oh. you wouldn't get married. No, come on. Oh, oh, what's the first? Oh, well, I'm the only one who would think a little bit pervy. Bullshit. No, no. <laughs> you and Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, me and Potter be straight around Cheryl Coles. <laughs> oh, Ashley, what the bloody hell's going on? Someone keeps knocking my boobs. <laughs> Steady, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do Did if you're invisible. Again? You just what, go what around you to celebrities' houses. Dunk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what would you do if you were invisible? What would I do if I yes, was invisible? Yes, Chris. I, I would fight crime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do? Yeah. <laughs> where can you now get married for the first house time? House of Commons. You can get married in the House you of can. Commons. And it's brilliant, cos then afterwards you can claim the whole thing on expenses. <laughs> <laughs> it costs you nothing. Uh, in other news, who can tell me what's happening here? Uh, oh, that was lovely. Oh, that it was. It is obviously hedgehogs, but why is one hedgehog slightly different to the other hedgehog? That's a pair of testicles to the new STD awareness campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what, it's what Cheryl Cole scratched off Ashley. There's <laughs> <laughs> one, one left going, who ate all the flies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fat hedgehog, you fat hedgehog. You ate all the... You understand. <laughs> <laughs> It's the new Labour Party campaign. The Tories. They look cuddly, but they're full of pricks. <laughs> Is it I've never voted Tory before? I'm a fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> The big fat one, the big fat one was in a, in Fife in Scotland, was in an animal rehabilitation centre. It was brought in for the winter but didn't hibernate. Uh, so its, its fat reserves weren't burnt off. So it carried on just eating its way through <laughs> the winter. And now it's on a diet. Because it is two pounds overweight. Two pounds overweight. Get you with your two pounds <laughs> overweight. Some of us are carrying some real bulk around. Right now. Uh, hardly shatter stereotypes about Scottish people, even more hedgehogs are obese. Yes. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Chris, Hugh and Kevin! That's the sort of game thing. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone, please, can make their way to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to get through your letterbox. Royal Mail parcel delivery. We called, you were in, so we ran away before you could answer. <laughs> Just three pounds a month will save last year's X Factor winner from starving. <laughs> Do you know what's in your attic? It's me, I've been there since Christmas. <laughs> 
have you seen this dog? No, maybe your windows are too dirty. Oh, heaven, the window cleaner. <laughs> Are you looking for a dog walking service? Then call Ace Kebabs on 318 318. Computer problems? Let me come round and swear at it. <laughs> Why has your girlfriend stopped changing near the window? Love, Dad. <laughs> Pizza. Buy one, pay full price. <laughs> How's my driving? Call 0800 crashed into your house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear Miss Winehouse, congratulations on turning 100. Best wishes, the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Need a room clearing? Call me. I'll come round and fart in it. <laughs> Looking for an undertaker? Why not call Ace Kebabs <laughs> on 318 318? Gardening service, middle of the night a speciality. Call Rose West on Broadmoor. <laughs> too, too soon, too soon. <laughs> Hello, my name's Ashley Cole. Here's a picture of me naked. <laughs> Would you recognise a fake ID? No? Great, I'll be back in ten minutes. <laughs> the Taj Mahal Indian restaurant. Formerly Ace Kebabs. <laughs> Open your letterbox. It's me. <laughs> I'll get through one day. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear at the Winter Olympics. And here are the British ice dance pair, Heather Mills and John Sargent. <laughs> and now, over to Bob Sled. Bob, how's the curling? <laughs> <laughs> and while we wait for them to get set up there, we'll just pan the camera around. There's just a beautiful scenery. Oh, look, there's a herd of moose. Oh, no, that's the uh, Romanian women's ice hockey team. <laughs> This is the big hill. Oh, that's long! That's very long! He's gonna wish he'd done his flies up. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. in the UK. You're watching the women's figure skating. Why not just bite the bullet and turn to Television X for the 10 minute preview? <laughs> <laughs> mm. And Britain comes away with two gold, two silver, and a bronze. Well, that'll teach the Austrians a lesson for leaving their locker open. <laughs> and with conditions here reaching a bitter minus 20 degrees centigrade, the British hopeful from Newcastle has put on a second string vest. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching the women's curling. Men's curling? Women's. You're watching the curling. <laughs> no one has more experience on the ice than him. What a wonderful game it's been so far for Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> And the conditions are perfect here, aren't they, John? Yes, they are, Bob. I haven't seen this much white powder since that stag weekend at the hotel in Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's what ice hockey is all about. A man having his head repeatedly smashed into a glass wall. <laughs> <laughs> the ski jump will start as soon as the British skier takes his hand off the side and stops crying. <laughs> And there, the skier has surprisingly stopped off halfway down for a mulled wine and a shit. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to rush ahead at Andy. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. <laughs> Congratulations to Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Kevin Bridges.
Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. <laughs>